Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. In today's tutorial video, we will be discussing about variables in Go. Now before we proceed, let us try to understand what is a variable in a computer program. A variable is a named location in the memory or the RAM of a computer to which a computer program can both write data to as well as read data from. And therefore, the value of a variable is subject to be changed during the course of the execution of a computer program. With the definition of variables behind us, let us start using variables in our Go program. For this tutorial, I will be making use of the Go Playground at play.golang.org. And the first thing we will start discussing is declaring variables in a Go program. To do that, we will make use of Go's var keyword, var. -var. And then we will specify the name of the variable let it be i in this case you can give any name uh, any name under certain restrictions and we will see the restrictions towards the end of the video and then i will specify the type of the variable which means the type of data which the variable is capable of holding so let me say i int integer in this case now, if you have a background of some other programming language, this might look very weird to you, but actually it is a very intuitive way of declaring variables. This is just like we would speak it out in normal English, like I want to declare a variable whose name is i and which is capable of ho holding values of type int. In the next step, I will try to assign a certain value to this variable. So let me say i is equal to 42. So we are trying to store the value 42 in the memory location specified by the variable i. In the very next line, I will try to print the value of the variable i. Uh, so I say fmt.println i and when I run this, I see that the value 42 gets printed on the screen. And I'll actually enhance uh, the print statement so that we have both the value as well as the type of the variable that we are interacting with. So let value is equal to uh, percentage V comma type is equal to percentage capital T. And then let me say a backslash N and let me specify I comma I. Uh, now when I try to run this, we can see that the value of I is 42 and the type of I is integer, which is as expected one very important fact here is that suppose i get rid of um, say uh, these two lines and then i try to run this program uh, the go compiler tells me uh, that i is declared but it is not used so this shows us that the go compiler doesn't allow us to keep any variables in the program if they are not being used somewhere in the program after being declared and this is a very helpful feature actually as far as code readability as well as code maintainability is concerned. As you all know, code is never static, but it keeps on changing from time to time. And with these changes, many of the variables might be, uh, sorry, much of the code might be removed and uh, much of new code might be added to a computer program or to a large software. And there might be certain cases uh, in which uh, all the lines where a certain variable was being used might be removed, but the declaration of the variable might still be available in the computer program. But here the Go compiler does not allow such a thing. If uh, lines of code have been removed, which were previously making use of the variable, the Go compiler will tell you that the variable is unused. And then uh, the only thing you could actually do is go ahead and remove the line where the variable is declared as well. And this will leave you with very clean code. Now I'll quickly restore uh, whatever I had on the screen. And the next thing I'd like to show you is that we don't need to declare the variable and assign it a value separately. We can do both of these things in the same line. So I say var j and I declare the type uh, integer and I say uh, let it be equal to 21. And then in the next line, I can go ahead and print it. And we see that the value is 21 and the type is integer. And that's not even it. We have a even shorter way of declaring variables. So I'm going to declare a new variable, which I will call K. Uh, so I'll use the, sh the goes shorthand variable declaration notation for that. So I say K colon equal to, let's say 11 in this case. And when I run this, 
I see that k is 11 and its type is integer. So uh, with the shorthand declaration of a variable, Go is able to infer the type of the variable based on the value that the variable is being assigned. In this case, we are assigning k a value of type int. So we see that the type of k is an int. Now, what happens if instead of 11, we point, uh, say that k is equal to 11.12. Uh, I go ahead and hit run. And I see that the type of k now becomes float64. And what if I say it is a string abc? I run this. And I can see that again, the type of k is string. Now, since i, j and k are variables and not constants, um, their values can change during the course of the execution of the program. So uh, what if I say i uh, is equal to 50 and then I again go ahead and print i, what will happen? We see that the value of i has been changed to 50. Now we'll discuss the concept that Go is both statically as well as a strongly typed programming language. But before that, let me tell you what is a statically as well as a strongly typed programming language. A statically typed language is one in which the types of all of the variables are known at compile time itself. For example, here we know at compile time itself that the variable i is of type integer. And a strongly typed language is one in which variables of a certain data type can only hold values of that data type and not of any other data types. Let us see an example. Now here we have the integer i and we are assigning it the value of 42 and it's all good till here. Now if I go uh, to the editor and say that i would be now a string which is a, b, c and I tried to run this program. It will tell me that go cannot use a, b, c which is of type untyped string as type int in the assignment because go is statically as well as strongly typed. We know at compile time that the variable i can only hold integers and if we try to actually put a string into the variable i which is capable of holding only integers, the compiler will start throwing an error and will not let us compile the program. So this introduces the feature of type safety in Go which prevents many sorts of unexpected errors and bugs in our code. Next, let us see what are package level variables. So uh, till now we were writing or declaring our variables inside of the main function. But we could also choose to declare our variables outside of the main function and inside of the current package that we are in, which in this case is the main package. So I can go on line number seven and I can say something like var j, which is of type integer and is equal to 10. If I go ahead and run this, our program compiles successfully. Uh, just make note of the fact that this variable j, since it is declared at a package level, will be accessible to each and every Go program, which is a part of the package main. Also note that the shorthand variable declaration syntax is not applicable for package level variables. Uh, actually, if even if I make the name as k, it won't work because it says non-declaration statement is outside of the function body. Now let us try to see the concept of scoping amongst variables. Suppose I copy this printf statement and print the value of j as soon as we enter into the main function. So I see that the value of j is 10 and the type is int. Now suppose after printing this, I declare another variable here, the same name as j, but this time the type of that variable would be float64. The value would be 10.45. And then after that, I go ahead and print the value of j. And in the meantime, I'll get rid of this code. It's not really needed by me at this point of time. 
Okay, I see that in the first print statement, the value of j is 10 as it was declared at the package level and the type is integer. Whereas after the execution of line number 14, we see that the value of j becomes 10.14 and the type becomes float. So this situation is called shadowing of variables in which our package level variables are getting shadowed by our local variables if our local variables happen to have the same name as our package level variables. And this is something you should be careful of while writing Go programs because it might lead to certain unexpected situations in the program. But we are actually not done here. Suppose I have an if block and within that block I have these same lines of code. Uh, but uh, instead of a float 64 this time, suppose the variable is of type string and let's give it some string value, let's say ABC, uh, very uncreative, but let it be. <laughs> okay, so when I run this, we see that the value of J within the if true block is ABC and the type is string. So now we see that the J declared on line number 14 has been shadowed by the j declared on line number 18. And what happens if we have the same statement after the if true block? Let's go ahead and run this. And we see from the output from line number 22 that the value of j is again 10.45 and the type is again float 64, which shows us that this declaration of j was shadowed for the time being on line number 18 and 19 and as soon as this block ended and the scope of this variable got finished, we again could access the previous value of j as declared on line number 14. So I hope the concept of shadowing of variables is now clear. Let me get rid of this and suppose what happens if I uh, copy this and replicate this exact code here. And I go ahead and run this. Uh, it tells me that J has been redeclared in this block and previous declaration was at line number 14. So what this is telling us is that although we can shadow variables across various scopes or across various blocks of code, when we are in the same scope or in the same block, we cannot have two variables with the same name. So our code will run correctly if we get, get rid of this section. And yeah, yes, it does. Now, sometimes what may happen is that we might need to declare many variables in one go. And it might not look that tidy when we are declaring many variables in one go. But Go is gracious enough to solve this problem by means of a variable declaration block. So I can get rid of the var keyword from each of these and I can put the var keyword outside and I can put all of these declaration inside a block of the var keyword. Let me quickly format the code. And when I go ahead and run this, okay, we see that we do not have any errors. And the syntax of a variable declaration block is very neat and enhances readability to a great extent. And you, you could also use it within your function so if I go ahead and write it here, I format the code and I run this, it will give me an error because I am not using the variables, but there is no other thing which is stopping me from doing it. Um, actually, why don't I just uh, change the names to something like A, B and C and then I just say fmt.println A, B and C. Uh, I'll format it and then I'll hit run. Oh no, we have a redeclaration of B here. So let me run this again. And yeah, we can see the three variables. Uh, this is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay, so I cleaned up the code a little. And the next concept we are going to discuss is related to information hiding. I already told you that a package level variable can be accessed anywhere within the package in which it is declared. So in this case, the variable j can be accessed anywhere within the main package, but cannot be accessed anywhere outside of the main package. 
But what if we want such a variable which can be accessed within the main package as well as outside of the main package. Achieving that is very simple and for that we simply have to create a variable in the package main whose variable name begins with a uppercase letter. So let me call it simply a global var. So what this does is that it creates a exported variable which can be accessed within the main package as well as in any other package outside of the main package. And what do we have to do in the other package to be able to use mains global var? Um, I'll just write some commented code. Firstly, we'll have to say import main and then wherever we want to access the global var, var variable, we'll say main dot global var and it's as simple as that cool so the next concept we will discuss is the, that of zero values for variables a zero value means a default value which a variable will be initialized to unless it is explicitly initialized to some value let's see an example suppose we have the variable i here which is of type int at this stage, if I run this code, we see that i has been initialized for us to the value 0 because the 0 value of the integer data type is 0. What if i were a float 64? What would happen then? So we see that the value, the 0 value for a float 64 data type is also 0. Uh, what if it were a boolean? I go ahead and run this code and we see that the zero value for a boolean is false and what is it for a string data type? Very well, it is basically an empty string. Okay, after this super long discussion, we still have one more thing to discuss which are the variable naming conventions. So the naming conventions in Go are pretty similar to other popular programming languages um, variable names in Go can contain characters, they can contain numbers, and they can contain an underscore. Variable names can begin only with characters or with underscores and not with numbers. And as I already told you, any package level variables whose name begins with an uppercase letter is an exported variable. Your variable names uh, should be concise for smaller scopes and at the same time, they should become more and more descriptive as the scope of the variable increases. Which means if the variable is going to be used for a smaller set of lines of code, it could be more concise. And if a variable is going to be used for a larger scope of the code, it could be more descriptive. For example, in a small for loop, you can use variables like i, k, uh, v, and so on. Whereas for a larger loop, uh, it would be preferable if you use variables such as index, key, value, and so on. So I hope you get the point. The other thing to make note of is that if there are any acronyms in your variable names, uh, such as, you know, um, link, uh, URL. So it is preferred if you put the acronym in all caps as opposed to something like link, URL. So uh, this is the preferred format of making your variable names in Go with acronyms. And I think so, this is going to be it. So this concludes our long and meaningful discussion about variables in Go. All of the code that we saw today has been updated in this repository, aedorado slash learning go, and the file name is variables.go. So please do check it out. And before going, if you found the content of the video helpful, please do hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates and like always, thanks a lot for watching.